What's up everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at y'all today with a video all about some low power variable optics, LPVOs. Why? Because they are taking the industry by storm. Your magnifier behind your red dot or holographic, that is the days of old. We're talking about stuff with throws and magnification from one power to six to eight to even 10. We're considering that low power these days. You know what's really funny is if you think about snipers of history, right? Uh, they did just fine with iron sights, okay? I'm just throwing it out there, but welcome to the future. The future is now, and we're here to talk about something that looks like it might be might be taking over the standard issue combat optic and rolling in with our top five here. Number five is one that I actually don't have any experience with. That's why it's so low on my list, but I have a feeling the first time I get behind this piece of glass and actually start sending rounds down range with it, it's going to quickly elevate its way up my list. And we're talking about the SIG Tango 6. It's a 1 to 6 by 24 optic that I, like I said, no experience with this specific one yet, but it is gaining some traction in the United States Armed Forces. Military contracts now are looking at, well, the Tango 1 to 6 here which is pretty cool. I do like LPVOs personally, and I'm still issued the Trijicon ACOG, which is a four power optic. So now we're going from something that has a one power to a six power, which is great because if any of you guys try to do any type of close quarter stuff with a four power magnified optic, set magnified, not variable whatsoever, it's kind of a pain, not gonna lie especially with how close your eye relief is and how little field of view you get. What I like about LPVOs is you get a little bit better field of view, which we'll talk about in our next optic, one that I do have experience with. But I do have experience with SIG optics in general, and I've always been pretty impressed with their stuff. It's all the way from their very affordable stuff to even some of the more expensive uh, optics that they offer, clear glass, which is great. And one thing that I can really appreciate about the Tango 6, the little mounting line that's engraved on the side of the optics. That way you're not sitting there trying to fiddle with whether or not you've got it straight on your gun. That little line that's engraved on the side of the optic that you guys can probably see right here, just a little white line makes your life so much easier. And I really appreciate when manufacturers try to make things easy for the end user. Thank you, SIG for doing that. Now send us a couple of your optics because I would actually really like to get my hands on one and shoot it and talk from personal experience. And that's another thing that I take into consideration about this list is availability. I can't find these things and I work in the firearms industry. So if you guys have a lead on a few of them, let me know. Now let's go ahead and talk about a one that's got a little bit more magnification to it. Swamp Fox, one to 10, let's do it. Next up is one coming in at a fraction of the cost of a majority of the other optics that we're gonna be talking about today, but it's still offered in a one to 10 power, and this is the Swamp Fox Arrowhead. Now, <laughs> it's over the SIG because like I said, I actually have quite a bit of experience now with this optic. This is one that I have been fielding for a little bit before we brought on and actually started carrying because I needed to see if it was actually worth a crap, and I've been very impressed with it. The only thing I don't like about some of these low power variable optics that start having, you know, dual digits magnification up to 10 power is once you start to magnify and get up into that type of power, you really start to lose the forgiveness of your eye relief. You have to pretty much be right where you want to be. But this one is actually a little bit more forgiving, even more forgiving than one that we're going to be talking about that is like four times the price in the next one, but it's also higher on the list for a reason. I'll tell you when we get there, okay? But Swamp Fox is pretty cool. Again, super available. We've got them on our website, so shameless plug there. And they're affordable, which is very cool. It still allows you to get a quality optic with some clear glass on your gun and be able to reach out to those distances that you might not have thought that you could reach out to before. A 10 power optic for a 5.56 gun is, Whew, that's a lot. And you will definitely be able to positively identify your target out to great distances. I think that is very cool. Something else I really like about this optic are its robust controls. It takes a simple little 2032 watch battery to power this guy too. It's the whole uh, reticle that illuminates, by the way. Also has night vision settings, as does the SIG that we talked about before, which I like quite a bit. Again, big, robust controls, things that actually lock into place too. So unless you're actually ready to make your adjustments, that's when you pull it out and you can start doing that. Once you've got it set to where you want it to be, 
push in and now this dial isn't going anywhere and there's no play in there whatsoever. It's just a well-built piece of glass that I'm happy to have here and also something that I'm happy to be able to offer you guys through Classic Firearms, of course. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, Swamp Fox, again, is the name. And if you want a little bit more history behind the name and Swamp Fox and their whole line of optics, make sure you check out our video, you know, introducing these guys. So go do that. With that being said, Again, a 1 to 10 power optic that is very nice, very clean, looks really good, lightweight, and it works, which I like. I was running it on a SCAR and it held zero, so that should tell you what you need to know, right? But anyway, let's talk about another 1 to 10 optic, but is like a lot more expensive than this one. Next up is an offering from Vortex. Vortex first off makes all sorts of low power variable optics that are phenomenal. And I went straight to top of the line here with their Gen 3 Razor 1 to 10, or you know, 1 to 10, not 1 to 10, 1 to 10, all right? This thing is a beastly boy. And I've been running Vortex for a while. I've always been very impressed with the clarity of their glass, their reticles and everything. It's just super nice. Now, other than the price, they're also a little difficult to find. They're not widely available, but they come across our uh, computer screens every now and then, and we're able to get them. But I will say that just looking through this thing, the massive field of view you get without a lot of obscurity is pretty impressive. However, whenever you fully zoom in on that guy with that 10 power magnification on it, eh, you start to get that scope shadow and it's nowhere near, for, near as forgiving as some of the low power ones that we'll be talking about like a one to six or one to eight. It is a first focal plane reticle, which means you're actually zooming in on the reticle and this is kind of like a personal opinion here when it comes to second focal plane versus first focal plane. A lot of people will say, hey, first focal plane is naturally better. They're more expensive, so they've got to be better. I don't know if I really agree with that. The previous optics we talked about, like the SIG is offered, depending on the reticle that you want, is offered in both a second and first focal plane. Depends on what you want there. Cool. The Swamp Fox is a second focal plane only. And whenever you start getting on these higher powered magnified optics, I actually like a second focal plane personally. Why? Because if you're at a one power setting, the first focal plane reticle is tiny. On the Vortex Gen 3 1 to 10, I can barely even make it out. And if it's not illuminated, good luck. Especially if you're out in the woods and it's just the etched reticle that you're using, you're gonna have a difficult time picking up such a small reticle. Now, the moment you move, you zoom in on that guy and you go out to that 10 power or maybe even six power, just not all the way fully zoomed in, you start to actually see your reticle. Nice, cool, but with a second focal plane, because the reticle does not change size or you're not zooming in on the reticle at all, it's just easier to pick up for me. And that's why I think I actually prefer the Swamp Fox 1 to 10 in that situation. However, the glass clarity on the Vortex the quality of the build, it's got a very thick tube, a 34 millimeter tube as well. It's a robust and pretty durable design. And also too, Vortex has a phenomenal warranty program. So if you ever do break your optic, you're gonna be well taken care of. So I really, really like all of those other features, but it is, it's, it's a lot of money. That's, that's for sure. You're coming in at a couple thousand dollars for that, for that optic and is it worth it? Well, <laughs> hey, why the heck not, right? Act, just go full send with it. But there are some more affordable options that I think that do just as well. And I'm here to talk about the next one that is also a super durable, rugged design coming from one of my favorite optics manufacturers. We're talking about Trigicon. Yeah, you guys already knew it was gonna be up here, all right? Trigicon has been around for a long time making phenomenal optics. And they've got the VCOG that you see right here, which is the Variable Combat Optic Gun Sight, which, it, this thing is durable. It's rugged. It's meant to be dropped, broken, and everything else, and it's going to hold zero, and you're just going to keep running with it, all right? It is a great design, great eye relief. I am a big fan of this optic. It's a one to six power. It is a first focal plane. However, whenever I am at only one power, I have a crystal clear reticle that is super easy to pick up, non-illuminated. It is just, again, a etched reticle that I'm looking at here without even activating the illumination on it. And even though it's a Trigicon, it is battery powered. This is not the ACOG that has the fiber optic and tritium built in. This is a battery powered optic. It is considered in my book still an LPVO. So not too many of those out there that are uh, tritium powered, but guess who makes them? 
Trijicon. Their AccuPoint line is also a great, great line, but I decided to go with the VCOG because, well, again, this is the one that I have the most experience with. I've got it here on my little Colt, and it's... It's been making me very, very happy, all right? So it's also the same optic we gave away with Braden Price not too long ago on the FN SCAR 17, and I think this is almost the perfect optic for the SCAR, again, just being so rugged, durable. And this one is actually specifically set up with a 308 reticle, so it doesn't make much sense having it on here, but I'm still using it, and it works, and I can still engage targets three, four, 500 yards and ring still with it, so I'm happy with it, all right? But like I said, Trijicon also makes their AccuPoint line of optics, which are, again, just phenomenal optics. Those are a little bit more civilian friendly in my mind, because I think for most civilian use, something like this really isn't all that necessary. But then again, for the price that you're getting it at, which again, it's going to set you back a little bit. It's not a cheap optic, but I don't think you should really cheap out on too many optics, but there are some good affordable options out there too. It really just depends on you guys, right? What, what your purpose is for that rifle and for that build. But I will say that on the six power of this guy here, even doing that right there, I don't get any scope shadow. I don't have to really mess around and try to find my correct side alignment. This thing just works, all right? Now granted, it's only a six power compared to the you know one to eight that we have coming up versus the one to tens that we've been talking about as well. So this is actually one of the lower powered optics that we've had, but in comparison to the SIG also, I don't know. It's also the only, uh, the only optic that we have here that has a self-contained mounting system as well. You don't need outside scope rings or a mount. It's got one built right in. However, me being who I am, I do have an aftermarket mount on here that is a QD by LaRue Tactical. Why? Because I can't ever leave anything alone. All right. So with all that being said, Trijicon is high on my list because they've got a special place in my heart. But as you guys know, I've been won over recently by EOTech and their Voodoo lines, and let's talk about my number one choice. They're not the most expensive, still a pretty penny, but they are available. They have great glass, great reticles, and EOTech just makes great stuff, all right? So first off, I wanna throw something out there really quick. All of the brands that we've talked about today, none of them are sponsored here. This is all coming at you guys 100% just me talking about it and what my experience has been thus far with these optics. Some of them more than others, obviously, but what I've got going on right here with the Voodoo, I've been very happy with. When EOTech announced that they were actually coming out with a magnified optic line, I was kind of excited because I knew EOTech, I know how good their holographic sights are, their magnifiers are, but I was concerned about something. Magnifiers have a short eye relief on them, similar to the ACOG. The VCOG that I just showed actually has a great eye relief on it, but those set magnified ones, man, yeah, you get your face right up here close to it, which isn't that big of a deal, but I like to have a good, clean field of view. And that's something that I think the Swamp Fox does very well. I assume the SIG would do very well because having seen other SIG optics makes sense. Something I know the Vortex does very well. This one, it's not the best at it. I will say the field of view is very good, but it isn't the best, but it's still at the top of my list for multiple reasons. Availability, check. Affordability, again, not the cheapest optic, but for the price that you're paying for it, I think it's phenomenal. Very, very clear glass on this guy. Nice etched reticle on the one to eight that I currently have here on the LWRCI. You've got your hash mark indicators, which I like quite a bit. And something else I like is whenever I have this guy thrown all the way over, and it also comes with a throw, which is a nice feature. When I aim down the sights on this, very forgiving eye relief. And that is something I like a lot about it. It's a eight power optic, a one to eight, which I think is very, very cool. It does also have a one to six. There's that guy there. And the one to six has a very large outer ring, which is great for close range and a very solid dot. But what is nice about it is this is a first focal plane on the one to six and the reticle here, <laughs> It's different. You've got a large donut of death, and then as you zoom in on this guy, that donut washes away, and then you actually show up on a very precise tar or very precise reticle in the middle. However, similar to the Vortex 1 to 10, the 1 to 6 first focal plane, if you don't have that illumination coming on, that reticle in the middle of the optic itself is so small and so precise that you're going to have a difficult time picking it up. 
That's kind of why I prefer the one to eight second focal plane here because it's just so easy to pick up and then it's a simple little red dot in the middle for your reticle. Overall, fantastic stuff by EOTech and on the LWRCI uh, recce build that we have here that I showed off earlier in a, you know, <laughs> recce build AR video, I thought, why not bring it back out and talk to it, talk about it a little bit more because, well, maybe we'll give it away one day if you guys think it, you know, deserves such an honor as being noted as a classic firearms giveaway. You guys just let me know down in the comment section, all right? But one thing I think would be very interesting is because I think EOTech has done such a good job with the eye relief on this guy, even at its max magnification. Curious to see how they would do with a one to 10. Curious, EOTech on a one to 10. Very, very curious. Just, are you pondering what I'm pondering everybody else out there? Hmm. Curious. All right, all that being said, I want to hear from you guys down in the comments section. Are there any other sights, optics that I may have left off that you think definitely deserve a spot here? One of which I will mention as an honorable mention is the Night Force Attacker. Again, one that I have no experience with, but I have to definitely acknowledge its presence because this thing is a commanding optic. I have seen it in a lot of use in military contracts and having some experience with Night Force, not per se the attacker, I've always been very impressed by those optics. However, whew, talk about price, also an expensive one. So it is what it is. Hopefully soon I can do like a whole head to head, you know, Swamp Fox versus Zeotech versus Night Force versus Vortex versus Sig. That would be a fun, fun video, I think, and I would probably need some help doing it. So if you're local to the area and want to do some distance shooting, you know, let me know down in the comments, all right? Take aim, training, and range is probably where we'll be doing it. And probably the last other one I want to talk about is the Leupold Mark 8 1 to 8. Also very expensive. When you start talking about optics, guys, it gets very pricey very quick, all right? That's why I appreciate some manufacturers out there still making quality glass for an affordable price, like Vortex still having those offerings, Swamp Fox being one of those, and Leupold even. Uh, they have a more affordable line, but one that I really wanna get my hands on is that Mark 8 1 to 8, and maybe put it up against the Voodoo that you see here. I think that would be a pretty interesting one. So again, if you have a lead on one of those, let me know. Availability, it's always a difficult thing. But all that being said, I mentioned before, maybe this guy will have the honor of being dubbed a classic firearms giveaway, maybe. Maybe, we'll see you guys, like I said, down in the comments if you think about that. But there is one that is a precision shooter that that is uh, our current giveaway and it is the Q Fix. The Fix is an awesome little 6.5 Creedmoor bolt gun with, yeah, it's an EOTech Voodoo. This is a three and a half to 18 power optic, which is overkill, I think, for this gun, but you know, overkill is just a confirmed kill, right? But uh, anyway, this guy here is a sweet little setup. I have a pretty good time shooting it. I talk a little bit more about what exactly is the fix fixing and it coming with the AccuTech bipod on it, the EOTech Voodoo is just an all around, I think, really sweet giveaway. So head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries. Check out our video announcing this as our giveaway to learn a little bit more about it. And I'll see you guys down in the comment sections over there about what your thoughts are on this guy and of course if you know the LWRCI little recce SPR here uh, deserves its place among you know the classic firearms giveaways I don't know let me know down in the comments don't forget there's multiple ways to get your entries one of those ways is via code word code word for this guy is really simple it's only three letters but you're gonna have to take a look at the screen to to see what it is. I'm not gonna mention it, even though I have several times now, but you're just gonna have to look at the screen here and then head to our website to get those entries. Don't miss out, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. I'll see you down in the comments section, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.